I know what you're thinking. This is new. This is exciting. Or this is shit. Because it doesn't say there's a guest. And I paid. Did you pay? For a guest. Um, There's no guest, right? But actually, in many ways, the guest is going to be you. This is an idea I would like to say that I came up with by myself. But in fact... I think I stole it from other podcasts, and I thought, that's a good idea, I'll do that on mine, but better. That's how I do most things, just steal an idea, and then make it a little bit better. That's evolution, though, isn't it? Darwin, baby. If you don't believe in evolution, not sure this is the podcast for you. Okay, here is, here's why I did it. I'll be honest with you, here's why I did it, and here's what it is. I depend on the Patreon, okay? It's a pound a month. I'm not going to flog it to you now. But with touring sort of being up in the air, I kind of depend on it now. It's got to the point where it's actually like, okay, that's my income. So the other thing I do is I depend on having another guest with high quality equipment. And given there's a pandemic still, I can't even fucking talk, rare. Um, Given there's still a pandemic, I can't really... I'm running out of people. So... I need to start doing, and people are dropping off the Patreon, like, oh, I can't afford a pound a month, which is fine, Um, but I think it's more like, I can't afford a pound a month, because you're only doing two episodes a month at the moment, that's not worth a quid, probably is worth a quid, if we're honest, but, okay, so I've got new ideas, I set up a little phone line, I set up a little phone line, you go to www.thedownbe.at, so it spells downbeat, and then you go to the hotline page, I think it's on the podcast page, And you can leave me a little voice note. And what we're going to do, we're going to read. Read? We're going to listen to some of your calls, which I haven't listened to any of them, so some of them might be shit. And then we're going to have a little discussion about them. I've requested stories. uh, I just basically said, do anything. Do whatever you want. So come in. I've got a new new little uh, theme tune for it. So we won't have the downbeat theme tune to separate it from uh, the Satan's hotline, I like to call it. I am Satan, your dark lord. Um, the Dark Ren Lord. I'll do a quick plug. If you want a T-shirt with like a, a gorilla deadlifting with the word blast beats on it, again the same website. Buy yourself a T-shirt, or don't. I don't. I don't care that much. I'm just bored, guys. I didn't sleep well last night. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna make some content. Okay, right. New theme tune. You ready? You ready? If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see me. If you're listening to this like normal podcast, you can't see me, but you're both going to hear, hopefully. I mean, if you can't hear, I'm sorry for you. Probably shouldn't be watching this because most of it's going to depend on the ears. Uh, Anyway, here's the little theme tune. It's Satan's Hotline on the Downbeat podcast. Do I give you the real theme tune as well? Should we just do it? Should we do both? I don't know what I'm doing. Nah, let's not bother. Okay. Let's go. Uh, what I've done here is I've deleted the ones that are under like 15 seconds because that's just going to be someone going, oh, you're a wanker. But there's quite a few that are like a minute, minute and a half. You know, we can go for a few of these. There's one, right, which is in three parts. One minute twenty each part. I reckon we're gonna end on that because I feel like the person DM me and said, Is this gonna be not safe for work if I do this? And I insisted. I don't know what the story is, but I insisted they do all the messages. Because they messaged me saying there was a one minute twenty limit and I said, just do more. So we're gonna end on that. We're gonna start let's start on some like quiet well, this one's anonymous, so this would be quite good. This would be like you're a prick. Um the reason I'm not doing this live, guys, this isn't on Twitch. Usually we're on twitch.tv slash Renlord. Um, is because I haven't listened to these. I want a genuine reaction. Some of them could be naughty words. And I mean naughtier than fuck shit, cunt. I mean real bad shit. So I imagine if we just click on one and it's immediately that. You ready? Let's go. This is from Anonymous, which makes me think this one's going to be a bit of hate. Let's go. Hi, Craig. Apologies in advance for my voice. Sorry, I could you the down and caught a cold. So my throat is double fucked up. If anyone doesn't understand that accent, 
Sorry in advance about my voice. I saw Architects the other day and I caught a cold. You caught a cold? Or did you catch COVID? Let's be honest. Um, give me some dating advice, please. Because it's quite hopeless at the minute. Thanks, Craig. Love you. Some kisses at the end there. That got a bit dark. Give me some dating advice, which is nice. And then they said, because it's, it's got a bit ho- a bit hopeless. Now, that's a bit... <sighs> Here's my advice, right? I'll do this. Nip this in the bud. I don't have your name. Anonymous. Hopeless Anonymous. Number one, join the Downbeat Discord, right? Because if you're a fucking mental person and you listen to this podcast, there's other people there. There's about 1,500 people in there. Bound to be a fit bloke or girl in there for you or they. You know, get in there. Number one, plug over. Number two, and here's my personal advice, right? This is coming from someone who is, I've been divorced. I've been married. I've been divorced. I've been single. I've been poly, right? Here's my genuine advice is get the per- the person you get with, make sure they've got an OnlyFans. Now, I don't mean gen- like genuinely make sure they've got an OnlyFans, but in my experience, right, it's fucking awesome. Because if you don't know, if you're my mum and dad listening to this or whatever, this is going to be a bit of a surprise. Um, if you don't know, if you if you live in a cardboard box or you're an old person, um, OnlyFans is basically a porn website. From anywhere from softcore porn to hardcore absolute debauchery. <laughs> And um, what it is, is peop- people make, you know, they make content on there and they sell it. It could vary from just like, oh, here's a bit of my bum, not whole, to here's me absolutely fucking drilling myself or whatever, you know, you, you get the point. Anyway, longevity wise, right? If you think about it this way, I'm not saying that everyone needs an OnlyFans or whatever, and I'm sure there's some people that disagree with pornography, etc., stuff like that. God, we went in on number one, didn't we? Um, you know that anyone who has had a relationship or enjoys sex, this is excluding the... Um, this is assuming anonymous is not asexual. You know that sex that you have on... Your birthday. Maybe the first two birthdays out of a relationship, out of a long-term relationship, that sex you have on your birthday where they wear something nice for you or they let you do something nice, right, that you have once every 365 days for about two years and then it doesn't happen anymore, right? Dating someone who's got an OnlyFans is like having that three to four times a week. It's like your birthday three times a week. Okay, that's my advice. Join the Discord and uh, get with someone with OnlyFans. Terrible advice, but you didn't ask me for real advice, really, did you? We wanted it to be funny. As well as it being funny, hopefully, it was actually accurate. Anyway, next, I'm going to go to some newer ones. Two weeks ago, from Luke. Ready? Oh, you got to help me, mate. you got to help me. What the fuck? I hope this isn't like a guy that's like trapped somewhere. This is two weeks ago. He's long dead. I suffer from death grip syndrome. I can't come. Are these all going to be sexy? (laughs) What sort of a climate have I created? I suffer from death grips syndrome and I can't come. I can't come. Please help me. I really, really, really need your help. I've never been able to come from vaginal sex, oral sex. I only beat my meat, and that's the only way I can, uh, you know, please help me. I'm desperate. (laughs) Fucking hell. I don't know if that's a joke. Because it's an Australian accent. It's hard to tell when they're joking because they're almost always joking. But he did go into detail and say he couldn't... uh, These are all going to be sexy, aren't they? He couldn't have it from 
vaginal or oral sex. Um, and he beats his meat, and obviously it works. Um, sounds like you might be gay. Like, if pussies aren't making you come, maybe dicks are going to make you come. Try it yourself. Just swap, swap shop. Swap teams for a minute. Luke, could say your full name, but if that's real, I don't really want to. Um, another short, let's do another short one and then we'll deep dive on some of these longer ones. Ready? I'm not going to say his name yet, again, in case it's something mental. Bum stuff guy again. Oh, that's a follow-up. And his first word was bum stuff guy again. This is absolutely X-rated behaviour. Okay, one short one, and then we're going to go to bum stuff guy. Fuck me. What? What do you guys think of me? You're absolutely correct, but what do you think of me? Um... Cameron Coggin, full name, full email address. This can't be naughty, surely. Hi. Um, so, listening to your podcast, it's like 11.30 over here, Melton Time in Colorado, USA. What's up? Colorado, lovely part of the world. South Park. South Park from Colorado. Up, But I was just curious, like, uh, I wanted to buy one of your cool beanies um how would i get it shipped to my location that's something that annoys me quite a lot cameron i don't know if people do this so they get a response now i'm not saying i'm big enough to for somebody to want notice me senpai shit but i've always shipped internationally when you go on the website and you put it in your basket it gives you the shipping to your thing okay because i'm only seeing uh, shipping for, I guess, the UK and Europe and whatnot, so... You're talking shit, Cameron. Yeah, kind of a dumb question, but... Yeah. It's fucking dumb. I appreciate that you want a fucking beanie. Two months ago, I, f- I fucking... Let's find out if you figured it out. I'm going to go to the orders right now. Live. And I'm not going to edit this out, because I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered to pay an editor. Shout out, Simon. One day I'll pay you more than I already do. Cameron... Coggin. He did not figure it out. He has not bought a beanie. Is this a gross misuse of power? Am I allowed to do that? Just go through... I guess I am. I own the business. Anyway, if you'd like to completely destroy me based on GPRD or whatever it's called rules, then uh, get in touch with a local lawyer. Anyway, Cameron, yes... Downbeat stuff. You're all going to think that was an advert. Me and Cameron are in cahoots and I sent him a beanie for free. No, it ships worldwide. And in fact, so many people got annoyed at the cost after Brexit of having to pay more. But if you order from outside the UK, it's actually your order, your price of the product is cheaper to counteract the tax that you have to pay. I take the hit for you. And nobody knows. 40 seconds, then we're going to bum stuff, guy. Please don't be... Did I ask for sexy stuff? Hey there, Craig, or should I say Satan? We like the quality already, Pete Pete Carparelli. What microphone have you got? I uh, just wanted to say I'm a big fan of your show. Thank you. Um, love the videos that you put up on YouTube, dissecting playing technique, how drums sound, natty or not. Um, you're absolutely fucking hilarious, man. This guy's. Just, I paid this guy actually. Me and Pete go way back just to, just to fucking hype me up a bit, and uh, hope to uh, have you pick apart my playing one day once I get my kit back up and get my chops back going. Uh, Pete, you have my word because now you're on the podcast, Pete Carparelli. You're on the podcast and you're on the YouTube that you asked about. I'm gonna fucking rip you to shreds. Do a video. Uh, I hope to uh, be ruthlessly critiqued. And given excellent, excellent pointers I'll from you, it, such baby. as yourself, an awesome drummer. Oh. Uh, my name's Pete from Chicago. Again, Craig, downbeat rules. Everything you do has been really great, especially watching during the pandemic. And I uh, hope to chat to you soon, bud. Be well. Do you know what? That's really nice. 
I was having a terrible day. Look at that. Because this is in video, you can see my natural smile. I was actually having a terrible day and I thought this might make me feel better. And Pete directly made me feel incredible there. What a nice guy. Chicago as well. You got a Vapianos, right? They're not everywhere in America. You got... I think there's a Nando's in Chicago, which if you're in the UK, you're like, big deal, Nando's. But if you've been in America for like two months eating fucking deep dish pizzas, also Chicago, sometimes you want a little Nando's. Chicago's got one. What else you got? That diner. What's the diner in Chicago? It's the famous one. I got food poisoning there once. Me and Tom. And then I had to not actually play the show. Connor from Beartooth had to fill in for me because I was puking my fucking brains out backstage. Anyway, Peter, we like that. Anyway, let's go to Bum Stuff Guy. Where is he? I can't wait for this three-parter. We're going to fucking end on that. I, can't, I hope it's good. I hope it's not th- like six minutes of somebody just saying, basically, I'm going to flay you. I'm going to skin you, Greg. Greg, you're going to be skinned and flayed. I'm going to wear you. And then I'm going to use your face ID on your phone because your face is on my face. And I'm going to get your cryptos and I'm going to spend them on NFTs. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Um... Bum fun guy. Where were you, bum fun guy? What was his name? Jack Davis. <laughs> Let's go. Well, I've just, I've just fucking said his name. He put his full name and his email address. I'm really sorry if you don't want this public information out there. So, a bit of context. I work in a hospital. Worked there about five years. I work in operating theatres. Oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I hope he doesn't lose his job, but it's going to be good. He works. It sounds like he's actually at work and he has to get this in right now. Like, basically, I work in uh, hospitals. I work in operating theatres. In the East Midlands. And one weekend we were, uh, well, I was covering an emergency shift. I've got to translate this a little bit. East Midlands accent. One weekend I was covering an emergency shift. In emergency theatres. Maybe been in theatres a handful of times at this point. He's only been in theatres a handful of times. Not movie theatres, Americans, because you love to say that. In theatres now. He means the operating theatre. Lives are at stake. Shut up. Stop. Eating Oreos and wearing Mickey Mouse merch. How weird is that? That's the first things that I thought of when America. I didn't think of Eagles. Mickey Mouse and Oreos. Yeah, sort of like really new, really just starting the career. And I don't know whether this is a funny story or a gross story or I've just found an outlet to express my trauma. But, trauma uh, time. So I walk into a major theatre one night and uh, I'm greeted by three surgeons all stood around a patient, uh, legs akimbo. Legs akimbo. I don't know if that's a, a worldwide term. That means spread legs. He went to the emergency theatre, third or fourth time there. Three surgeons stood around someone like that. Please be a guy, though. I don't want it. I don't want to hear something horrible about like, some birth birthing situation. In stirrups, they have cervical spreaders either side of his butthole. Cervical spreaders, which made me think, identifies. Oh, it wouldn't even be, well, can of worms. Cervical spreaders made me think woman, and then he said his butthole. So at the very least here we're working with identifies as a man. And one surgeon is like elbow deep inside of him. Uh, Elbow deep? Basically him and his girlfriend have got like really coked up and like stuck. Him and his girlfriend got really coked up and stuck stuff on his ass. Sounds like they're going to say that. Who would do that? Some hair wax up his bum. Hair wax? Wait. Him and his girlfriend had got like really coked up and like stuck some hair wax up his bum. Hair wax? Hair, as in like styling product? And like it was sort of like a square tub, circle tub type thing. And they put it in like the big way. Like a. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They put the tub in. For a minute there, I was thinking lube. 
they used hair wax as lube, and I was like, oh, where's this going? They put a tub of hair wax. I wish I had one. I haven't had my hair cut in ages. Plug, I suppose, like a plug in a drain. And, uh, yeah, so basically, if a patient sticks something up their bum, you have to take it out and clean it and give it to them, which is what I did. Um, gave it back to him when he was awake. He was quite forthcoming about the whole thing, and a month later, almost to the day, he came back with the same tub up his ass. Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm fucking fully mind blown. He went, he got a paraphrase, he was in the emergency room with a tub of hair product up his ass. My man Jack here had to fucking dive in, delve in with his waders on like he's carp fishing, get this thing out, give it to him when he's compass mentus, and then he came back a month later with the exact same little jar, I imagine, up his fucking arse. I've got follow-up here. I we got to do this every month, surely. Bum stuff guy again. What up, Jack? <laughs> That's not a name I want for myself. Anyway, I just have many bum stuff stories. Mainly, mainly, you're all hospital related. It's all very juicy. I was just following up saying, I got more of these. Let me get, let me tell you, Jack. Jack's bum stuff operating theatre stories. Can we make that a, can we make that a constant? A constant theme on Satan's Hotline, which I'm now hoping, given that this has absolutely cheered me the fuck up, that I'm now hoping this is going to be something that we keep on the podcast. Because I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm having a lovely time. Um, We don't want to do the triple th- triple threat yet. I don't want to do that three How's about... That was close. How about... Oh, I've got someone pretending to be Josh Middleton here. <laughs> nice. Josh from Architects. It's not him, obviously. Um, this is from Josh Middleton, Sir Shreds a lot at gmail.com. I would hypothesize this might be... Uh, let's, let's find out what they're saying first. Oh, hello, Craig. I'm a wonderful fan of the downbeat. Oh, and I really hope that you are... Uh, play my voicemail on your live show. Mm, sometimes I like to, uh, you know, I like to watch you blast beat whilst I beat it off. Oh, no. Did I say that out loud? Oh. Lots to take in there. Um, I would hazard a guess that I probably know who that is. Um, one time when Josh was filling in for Architects before he joined Architects when he was still in Silosis, when he was filling in when Tim left, so it was Tom Searle and Josh were the guitarists, and they asked Josh to join, and he said no, because he was was still doing Silosis. Um, They made, and I think maybe it was actually me, because it does sort of sound like the sort of bullying that I would instigate, or maybe Tom. Uh, we made a fake Josh Middleton Twitter that was called Joss Middleton. And we would just tweet stuff like, oh man, can't wait for the new Dragon Force solo to come out. And shit like that. And we pretty relentlessly bullied him. Um, so I would... <laughs> Signs point to architects, but then the accent at the end. Initially, because Sam's really good at voices, I thought that might be Sam. But then the end is definitely not Sam. It was I beat it off. Oh no! Did I say that out loud? That's not Sam's voice. Whoever you are, it's funny. I'll give you it. Um, who else we got? Someone claiming to be Ed Sheeran. Ready? I'm in love with the shape of poo. Nah, not funny. I'm afraid. Not even going to play the re- the other 21 seconds. You're out. Got another one. Luke Gallows. 
Hey, dude. Uh, I've been uh, been sick lately. I uh, had sinusitis, and the doctor gave me some uh, some uh, antibiotics. And I'm wondering if this is going to become a joke, or he's just genuinely just saying I've been sick. If you've been sick, Luke, it's two months ago now. Hopefully, we're over it. I'm pretty sure I've seen you on my Instagram, so maybe you are over it. And I've been shitting, like, uh, I've just been pissing shit out my bum. And, uh, yeah, I just want to know, do you reckon I should continue with the antibiotics or just, just let the sinusitis just kill me? I'm not a doctor, Luke. I know what you're saying. You know, don't, don't talk yourself down, Dr. Reynolds. You are a fantastic medical doctor. Uh, I'm not. However, as you can hear from my nasally tone, I often suffer from sinusitis <laughs> really badly. My nose is absolutely fucked. Nothing to do with hair wax, though. Um, basically, get one of those, it, so this doesn't happen again, get one of those, like, saline rinses. This is fucking boring podcast material, wasn't it? Get one of those saline rinses, and you like you squish it up your nose before bed because I've got mad allergies um, and since I started doing that I haven't really had a cold other than the time I got COVID and I didn't bring my fucking nose thing with me to America and I've not, I'm not had sinusitis since there you go uh, and always carry on a course of antibiotics because otherwise antibi- antibiotics antibiotics um, always carry on or else you create super strains. And we hate a super strain here, don't we? Reese. All right, Craig. I pointed my life when I started to hear everyone and really fucking me off. Have you ever come across this? How have you dealt with it in the past? He's a little bit Scottish, I think. Peace. I've got to re replay it. Because I think you just said I hate everyone. All right, Craig. I'm at a point in my life where I'm starting to hate everyone. I'm at a point in my life where I'm starting to hate everyone. And really fucking me off. They're really fucking me off. Have you ever come across this? How have you dealt with it in the past? Peace. Well, Reese. Let me tell you about me and hating absolutely every single person on planet fucking Earth. It's a thing. Um. I think it's very... Look at me being trying to be serious after all the bum fun stuff. I think it's pretty... It's pretty much a given right now if you're on social media, you are going to hate at least 50% of the people. Because at the moment, with every topic, everyone either has a staunch opinion here on one end of the spectrum a staunch opinion on the other end of the spectrum, or the oh-so-holier-than-thou people in the middle who claim to be able to see both sides. Fuck those people in the middle, number one. Those people in the middle don't have the problem with hating everyone. The people on either side of the spectrum, at least they've got... uh, Obviously, sometimes you're going to disagree with most of their views on the other side. At least they've got the bollocks to say it, haven't they? But... In this world, if you have an opinion currently on anything, you are force-fed other people's opinions of the opposite way. It's even the way that the algorithm works on YouTube. Negative comments, negative videos you you would disagree with get more negative... uh, Sorry, get more engagement because people comment... You know, it's the same thing as if, if you ate at a restaurant and enjoyed it, your X amount likely to leave a review. But if you didn't enjoy it, you're like a hundred times more likely to leave a review. It's the same with negative stuff. So what the algorithm does is deliberately shows you stuff to piss you off, to try and get you to engage with it. It's a horrible cycle. It makes you hate everyone. You don't want to be the person in the middle that has no opinions. But what I can say is that the best way to deal with it is to just fucking go with the flow. Don't, don't disregard your opinions, but just have the sort of outlook like, fucking none of this matters really, does it? When I see something, and I see something I really, really, it gets my blood pressure up and I really want to disagree with it or retweet it or anything, these days I'm just like, oh, does anything really matter? 
we're all going to fucking die. Absolutely all of us. My advice, keep your, the close-knit circle of people that you do like super close and just fucking ignore everyone else. Just don't even get involved with it. And take real deep breaths through your nose if it fucking works properly. Um, when you're in like a line for something and someone in front of you has been really slow because that is when you could end up murdering someone from from my experience anyway. Okay. Albin. Hello, Craig boy. Is that a real accent? I'm excited. I'm from the great country of Sweden. Yeah, Swedish Viking. I could do a bit, a little bit of British, a little bit of Australia, mate. And, uh, yeah, that's how it is. From Sweden, little British accent. But I'm a talking uh, Swinglish. I have a question for you, okay? Uh, how old were you? when you lost your virginity that's what i want to know have a good one mike she's i i fucking love he actually sounded more danish than swedish obviously i'm not denying that he's swedish i love a swedish danish accent right at the end he said something that just like because i was like the whole way through i was like is this guy really swedish virginity virginity the way he says it sounds like it's a fucking sofa at Ikea. Oh, have you got the three-seater in the virginity? That's what I want to know. Have a good one, mate. And then he shouts at me. Um, the answer for that is far too young. I'll actually tell you this story because it's fucking mental. Oh, I can't. I tell you, because technically... Technically, it involves kids, but I was the kid. I'm not going to touch this one. I was the kid. It was with another kid. Oh, fuck. This is real bad. Let's talk about someone else. Um, I wasn't, I was never, nothing happened to me. I was too young. The other person was also too young at the same time, same age. Cleared that up. Next, I'm sorry for not answering that but I near, very nearly lost my career. Volkanov. Hello, my name is uh, Volkanov. Not a real voice. You're not getting it. Nah. If we give these people airtime, they're going to continue to do it. We're trying to run a tight ship here. Hi, Greg. Uh, I'm a fan from Canada. Canada, fuck. I used to listen to your podcast a lot, but... I used to. Oh, is this going to be the guy? Is this going to be the guy? I've fallen off a bit. Uh, I bought a lot of your gear, and it has cost me hundreds of dollars. In All right. In shipping, which is unbelievable, but that's not your fault. Are we going to have this every time? <laughs> you obviously bought it a while ago, because as I said, I redu you pay a, a lower premium to counteract. I would love you, Josh. I appreciate you, obviously. I really do. You've fallen off on the podcast, though, so will you even hear this? You want to look at your whole basket total and compare that to buying at home. Anyway, just calling to say that um, I don't really like certain aspects of what you're doing because... Oh, yeah! You'll talk about cancel culture and you get really wrapped up in it and you'll come from this place of moral superiority and it doesn't allow the conversation to get to a point where you can talk about forgiveness and growth. Isn't this funny how we already didn't like this guy before he said the thing that we don't, that we don't like him for? Isn't that an odd parallel? And then, we all know that you've been through a lot of mental health problems as well. And no one wants to see you hurting. Uh, I really like Straight From The Path's albums. I love your drumming. 
as a drummer myself, I think you're dope, but but it's uh I don't like when you take this moral high horse and you act like you know every nuance of every every subject of everyone's canceling of all these controversial figures who have i said deserves to be cancelled that this person doesn't like that this person does like who do we reckon because it just doesn't open up the possibility for someone to be redeemed it's as i lay dying i'll put my fucking flat on it so i'm hoping going forward you maybe consider that a little bit and just consider the fact that everyone's a human and I think everyone deserves a chance to maybe start again. Anyway. I honestly think it's amazing how we got off on the wrong foot immediately. Uh, I'm not disagreeing with what he says. It kind of ties in with what I said earlier. Like, if you've got your own opinions on something, definitely still have your own opinions. Problem with me is I have a platform and then I put my opinions out there. Um, I think... What did he say again? Let's get this. Hope you have a good day. Guys. Well, do you hope I have a good day? I don't think you do. You'll talk about cancel culture. Talk about cancel culture. Re- right. Which I do talk about a lot because I do think there is a line. I actually more do it as a joke because I've kind of realised now with everyone... Lambies is trying to kill his wife. He's fine now. He's not cancelled. He's playing gigs. Um, Louis C.K. wanking at women. He's back, right? I'm now pretty certain the only thing you can get truly cancelled for, actually cancelled, and I mean that means you don't get an article in a newspaper because that's more coverage than anyone else gets, um, is actually killing someone... Which even then, Varg, he's not technically cancelled. Quite a lot of people who have killed people aren't cancelled. Or tried to. I think the only thing you can truly be cancelled for is banging kids. And rightfully so. So, Josh, if you're saying I should open up the discussion to paedophiles, I'm not going to do it, mate. If you're saying I should, if we're talking about forgiveness, that one, nah. However, the if we are talking about Tim Lambesis, and I'm pretty sure we are, if anyone doesn't know, Tim Lambesis hired a hitman to kill his wife. It went wrong. He served two years in jail, and then he got out. And some people don't agree that he should be playing, living the life he led before he did that, and some people think he should be forgiven. My whole stance, if you'd fallen off with the podcast, if you hadn't fallen off with the podcast, Josh, I know I'm being, I'm, I don't hate you, Josh, I'm just doing a funny thing so that people laugh at it. Um, if you hadn't have fallen off, you'd probably hear that I actually want to get Tim Lambesis on the podcast. I can't think who else you could be talking about. He's the only one that I have pretty, pretty pretty strong opinions of um the the only one that's in any way ambiguous in that you know society's forgiven him and yet some people with platforms haven't i would love to have him on the podcast and i would love to actually talk about because as far as i'm aware he hasn't done it because his defense was the steroids right if he came on the podcast and he told me the compounds that he was using. I have friends who I have witnessed go absolutely fucking batshit crazy from certain steroid compounds. And then you have other ones where people that are on testosterone replacement therapy, um, trans men, like they're taking them and they're not going out and they're trying to kill their wife. So... If if I've got first-hand experience with, not myself, but seeing people go absolutely batshit crazy on these certain steroids, if he came out and said this was the one I was on and it was the same one that my mate was on, I personally would have more of a degree of forgiveness than I currently do. I hope that answers your question. 
I hope you don't take anything I said personally. Sometimes the people who are don't like the talk about cancel culture and they don't like cancel culture, sometimes those people can be a bit sensitive. So I hope I haven't annoyed you. I guess we're just going to end. End on Carter Bradley. Let's make it a good one. Hey, Craig. Uh, I, I don't know how often you check these, but I just want to tell you, um, you're the fucking man. You hear that, Josh? Like, just seeing you um, talk about drums really just makes me want to get off my ass, my lazy ass, and go. I mean, that's surprising because I fucking hate drums. Honestly, it stressed me the fuck out. Don't even get paid for them. Rubbish. Uh play like how you play um terribly That's listening to your to podcast has really just sparked a whole new interest in drums for me and like becoming a better player and isn't that weird because i think that i don't talk about drums and i fucking hate them and i do the do the art a disservice yet carter bradley here from somewhere in america or canada i'm guessing hear that tamar minor evans vic firth next time i ask for free shit just the amount of Joking insight I've gained best. from you and the people that you've had on your podcast, like Will Putney, uh, Brennan Murphy, all those the boys. cool dudes, it's just made me um, pretty much fall in love with that whole kind of you know aspect of music. Um, yeah, dude, you're really an inspiration to me. And I know it sounds like I'm sucking your dick right now, but I mean, you literally are one of the coolest dudes in drums I know. And Oh, this feels bad to be listening to this on the thing. Because it's so nice. Um, I don't know if you'll ever get this, man, but just, I yeah, dude, can't. like, I've never really had somebody that I look up to in the drum community, and I'm not really even shitting you, like, when it comes to that, like, yeah, sure, I love all my favorite bands and everything like that, but there's not really a drummer out there who's, like, a personality like you are, man, and I just want to say I love what you, I love what you do, keep it up, and I'm going to be probably, you know, following you till the day I die, <laughs> so. So, yeah. What a fucking legend. That makes me, uh, honestly, made me like, get a little bit emotional there. Carter, what a fucking legend. Um, I'm glad that this stuff helps people or it makes them like drums because I, I thought it would make people hate drums. And uh, that's awesome. But we can't end on that. I mean, we got Carter for life and we... Josh, who we lost earlier, we had him for a bit. So actually, we're still up. Let's say we had, if I've got out of 100, 100 is fan for life. We had Josh up to 50% maybe. But then Carter says he's going to be for 100. So we've actually up 50. So I think we can't end on a positive one. We need to end on someone who doesn't like me. It's got to be easy to do. My name. No, I could tell that one wasn't going to be funny. Hey, Craig, this is Justice. I'm a 19-year-old drummer and guitarist from Texas. Unbelievable name. Justice. What up? Um, I'm currently delivering sandwiches until 3 in the morning, and I wanted to ask you, I'm planning on dropping out of college because I hate it, and working on mixing, mastering, and producing, and all that fun stuff. Um, and I wanted to know your opinion on that. But um, you may give your opinion, and I probably won't listen. I would just like Respect. to hear you say what I want you to say. And if you don't, I probably will ignore it. But Like everyone else on Earth, at least you can admit that. Everyone asks for an opinion from anyone, and they all they want is the reaffirm affirmation they want to reaffirm what they already want so i'll tell you i'm listening to your podcast while i work and it makes me want to die just a little bit less so i thought it was just gonna say it makes me want to die and i was gonna be like, that's it we're done justice um 19 what are you doing at college we don't know that um to do mixing and mastering my thing 
I wouldn't pay money to do that. So if you're thinking of dropping out to go do it somewhere else, you can learn everything on the internet. Um, to be honest with you, I fully... If you don't want to do college and you're 19, don't fucking do it and just do it later on. Some of the most successful, well-rounded, lovely people I know, I'm not saying everyone should drop out of college. I didn't drop out of college. I saw it through, but I did do music. Easy. Um... George Schmidt dropped out of college to be in a band. He's literally just done his uh, PhD, maybe, or so. He's done something fucking crazy now. He's just just graduated now at whatever thirty. So you can always come back and do that. I always think they should just make you not do college for like five years after school, because then you actually want to do it. Like I could go to college now. I'm not going to. But I could go and do something mad that just interests me. I could go do fucking Egypt. Can you do that? Egypt degree? But like, I reckon with my old brain now, I'd be like, actually, I'm into that. I'd learn about it. I'd write about the sarcophagus. Do the, draw the period. I don't know what you would do in an Egypt thing. Anyway, you get my point. Um, if you want to drop out, drop out. But if you're going to do it, don't drop out and then just party like a monster. Drop out and work at mixing and mastering as if it was your college, as if it was your job. Do it fucking 10 hours a day. Anyway, come on. I want one negative one. Hi, Craig. We've done him because I remember his dulcet tones. I think we're done. I don't think... Now we've got the other ones. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for, you know, being a part of it. I'd like to thank... I could do some more negative ones, if I'm honest. I couldn't. Oh, my, my fragile ego can't take it. Everyone said something nice. Thank you very much. Even Josh said something nice, really, didn't he? Uh, uh, he didn't, actually. But, you know, he wasn't being mean. I just, I'll just act as if he was being mean. Which, if I know Josh... He's going to take very well, and it's going to be fine. Um, and I hope maybe if we were talking about the same thing that it uh, has cleared up my opinion on it. Um, that was cool. If you want to submit a little voice note, it's super easy to do. You can do it on your phone. You go to www.thedownbe.at. Mm. You just go to that bit first, and then you buy a T-shirt from the purgatory section. You can get loads of cool shit. Then you go to the podcast section and you go to Satan's hotline, leave me a message. And you click on that and then you can leave the voice message on your phone. It's completely anonymous if you want it to be. If it's a short message, I'm probably not going to listen to it. Uh, If it's something offensive, it will be cut out because I don't do this live. So just questions, um, philosophical shit, Egypt shit maybe. Apparently I like that now. That was awesome. I hope everyone had a lovely time. You want to play out with the downbeat theme because we didn't actually have it? <laughs>